And this is very important because remember that if you want to be a computer vision developer, yeah, you have to learn Python and OpenCV, that's super, super important, but you also need to know something other than Python and OpenCV, right? If you want to get a job as a computer vision developer, or if you want to take some more advanced projects, you definitely need to become skillful in our techniques and uh, setting up an API, make an API up and running, building an API, I think it's something absolutely every single developer should be able to do, right? I think that's something that's very important. I think that's going to enhance your uh, skill set as a computer vision developer for sure. So in today's tutorial, we are going to make our first image processing API. This is exactly how the AWS console looks like and we are going to use different AWS products in order to make this API up and running. We are going to use a Lambda function, an S3 bucket and also the API gateway. So we are going to get familiar with all these different products and something I want to say before starting with today's tutorial is that if this is the first time you are looking at the AWS console, if this is the first time you are going to be working in the cloud, everything may seem a little scary, everything may seem like an adventure, <laughs> everything we are going to be uh, building in today's tutorial. So I am going to move very slowly, I am going one step at a time, I am going to be right here with you the entire time and I am going to make this process as smoothly as possible, right? But if you're used to working in PyCharm in your local environment, in Python, like very um, traditional Python development, then everything that's related to the cloud and to the AWS products and services and the console may seem a little scary. So I am going to move super, super slowly so everything will be much, much smoother. That's something I want to say before starting this tutorial. And I also want to say that we are going to be focusing most of this tutorial on making this API up and running, on building this API. And we are going to be making an image processing function and we're going to make this function available through the API. But we are going to focus on the API. We are not going to focus on the image processing function itself. The image processing will be a very, very dummy function, will be something super, super simple. And it will be only an excuse to have an API up and running and we can learn how to make an API. It's only going to be a color conversion. It's going to receive an image in VGR and it's going to output the same image into grayscale, right? That's the only thing we're going to do with today's a tutorial with today's API. So let's start with today's tutorial. Let's start building our API. And before we start, I am going to show you a script, a Python script I created, and that's going to be super, super useful in order to test how everything uh, performs, if everything is working properly or not at the end of this tutorial. And you can see that we only have a function which is convert to gray. And this function, it's a very simple script. The only thing we're doing is defining a path, an image path, then reading this image and then converting this image to gray using this function. And then the only thing we're doing is writing this function to disk. And the image we are going to use in order to test uh, today's tutorial is this image which you can see it's a very, very proper image. If we want to test a color conversion, this image is going to be super, super proper. And the reason I created this script is because uh, at the end of this tutorial, I am going to make another function, which is convert to gray API. And we are going to uh, make exactly the same process, but instead of doing this color conversion locally, we are going to use the API, the API we are going to build into this tutorial. So for example, if I execute this script as it is now, you can see that we have generated a new image and this is uh, the same image converted into grayscale. So this is exactly what we will be doing in today's tutorial. We are going to build an API to do exactly this same process. So let's go back to the AWS console and let's get started. Uh, we are going to start in Lambda. We are going to create a Lambda function. So I am going to select Lambda and uh, I'm going to Lambda, create function, and we are going to select author from scratch. I am going to select a very appropriate number for this Lambda function, which will be something like a uh, color conversion. That's what this function will do. Color conversion. And let's do something like BGR to gray. Then we will select our runtime. You can see that we could create a Lambda function using many different runtimes. You have many different programming languages like Java 8, uh, Node.js, Python 3.7, 3.8, and so on. So we are going to use Python 3.8. 
Then permissions, we are not going to do anything. We are going to set the uh, default execution permissions and that's going to be all. Then I am going to click on create function and that's going to be all in order to create our Lambda function. So this may take a couple of seconds and that's pretty much all. The function is now created and you can see that this function, this is how the uh, Lambda function console looks like and you can see that it's, it has like a very similar structure to PyCharm, right? If I go to PyCharm, you can see that we have something like a file structure on the left and then we have the code, the files in which we can write code on the right. And if I go back to this console, that's exactly what we have. We have the uh, something which looks like a file system on the left. And here is where we are going to write our code in the right. So the, this, is, uh, this is exactly how the Lambda function looks like. And this is exactly the function which will be executed once we call our API, right? We are going to set the API in a few minutes. We are going to do it later on this tutorial, but this function we are going to code now, it's the function which will be executed when we call our API. This is very important. This is why we are using a Lambda function. So let's get started. And I am going to do something pretty similar as I did here with this function, which the only thing I'm doing is taking an image, doing a color conversion and returning the output of this uh, color conversion. That's going to be pretty much the idea of what we will do in this Lambda function. And let me show you how I do it. We are going to uh, access the image and the image we are going to convert into, uh, into grayscale will be under the body key of this object, right? We are going to receive uh, an object as input and this object will be something like a dictionary and if we access the body element, the body key, we will be accessing our image, right? And once we have our image, the only thing we need to do, I am going to import CV2. We are moving one step by a time. We will need to do some adjustments in a few minutes, but it, this is only to show you how everything is going to look like, right? Like the most generic structure of how this script will look like. So uh, once we have our image, the only thing we will do is to call CV2, convert color, and then uh, I will input the image and then CV2 color BGR to pray. Okay, this will be our grayscale image. Uh, let's do something like gray image. And then uh, we will return this uh, value. We will return this object, which is the grayscale image. This is pretty much the structure of this function. This is pretty much what we have to do. Now, I will need to make some adjustments. The first one is that although we are going to access the function under the body key, this uh, image will be encoded into base64. Base64 is an encoding algorithm. It's, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an algorithm which is very commonly used in this type of applications. And the idea is that, long story short, we will receive an image, but this image will be encoded into this uh, encoding algorithm, which is called base64. So what I'm going to do is to use an auxiliary function, which is this one. I have this function ready and this is how we are going to use it. You can see that this function receives uh, an image, which is an encoded image. And at the end of this function, we are going to do some processing. And at the end, we are going to return another image, right? Well, this is how we are going to use this function. I am going to decode everything that's under the body event of this uh, object and this uh, will be enough. So now everything will work super, super properly because we are taking the image, the encoded image, which is encoded under base64 and we are just decoding this image using this function. Everything will be super, super proper now. 
And now the we will need to do the same, but uh, at the end of this function, because we have created this grayscale image and everything is okay, but in order to return this image, in order to give the image uh, back to the user, in order to give the image back to this API, we will need to encode it into base64. Long story short, this is how this uh, process looks like, right? We will receive an object which is encoded in base64 and we need to return something similar. We need to return another object which is also encoded into base64. So I am going to use this other auxiliary function which is called encode and the, this will be exactly the same. So I am going to uh, do something like this. I'm, go I'm going to call this object object gray image underscore and then I am going to create another object which is called gray image and this will be encode gray image underscore right or i can just use the same uh, name so i don't use additional memory yeah so this will be all right if i go back to pycharm you can see that this is exactly the function we are coding we are taking an image and we are doing our, the color conversion but as we are working on the uh, on a lambda function we are work, working on the cloud the way this will work is doing exactly the same process but decoding the image uh, from base64 and then encoding the output into base64 right and now this is the object we need to return to the user, to the API. And this is what, how we are going to do. Um, this is the object which is return, right? We have, uh, this is like a default return object. And you can see that we have two elements, two keys. One of them is status code and the other one is body. We are going to leave the status code as it is. This is a... a a practice, a common practice in APIs, when you receive something that starts with a two, it means everything has worked properly. So we are going to leave this 200 as it is. And under the body key, this is where we are going to specify the gray image, right? <laughs> we are going to return the grayscale image into the body key of this Lambda function. And then I need to add some additional um, keys. One of them is is 64 based encoded i think it's the other way around it's base 64 encoded yeah this is how it is uh, or something like this i may have to adjust it later on this will be true and then uh, i will add another key which is content type and this will be no sorry this will be headers these are the headers of the return and we will have content type and this is where i will specify image png right uh, basically we are creating our api uh, and we are create we are telling the return we are telling the user we are telling anyone who is consuming this api that this is the object this is a type of object this is a type of information we are sending back in this api right this is exactly what we are telling and we are also telling that the return is encoded into base64 so uh, yeah this is pretty much all this is pretty much all for the lambda function we have pretty much completed the first uh, step in this process of creating an api and now what we will do is to test how this api works so what i am going to do is going to this button which is test and we are going to create a new event we are going to create a new test event so i am going to call this event test event and uh, this is where we are going to input we are going to simulate uh, the api we are going to use right once everything is working properly once we have set our api the api will call this function and it will give this function the image we will use under the body key right so uh, what I'm going to do is we are going to use this uh, image to test this algorithm in order to test this API. I will use this uh, website which is base64 encoder and this is one of those uh, websites that the only thing it's going to do, the only thing we're going to use this website for will be to uh, get the base64 encoding for the image, right? So I'm going to click on upload image and then I am going to select, or maybe the best way to do it is just dragging this image 
into this website right so the way this works is going to receive the image we are going to use in order to test this algorithm in order to test this api it's going to convert this image into base64 which remember the only thing of base64 is is an encoding algorithm we are taking the image and then we are just encoding this image into an algorithm that's the only thing we're doing and this is the uh, base64 encoding right and you can see it's only like a very 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 long sequence of letters characters numbers and so on so i am going back to the uh, lambda function and this is how we are going to do it right i am going to copy and paste this uh, base64 encoding of the image we are going to use in order to test this api in the body key of this test event so uh, and doing so what we are doing is we are simulating what will happen when we have this api up and running the api we are going to create in today's tutorial we will give this uh, lambda function an image which will be converted into base64 so this is how this will work and this is why we created this test event now let's see if the lambda function we have created works <laughs> what i'm going to do now is to test this test event now we are going to execute this event and you can see that the output we get is no model named cv2 right we are importing cv2 the same way we are doing it when we work locally on our local computer but uh, but now we get no model named cv2 which is exactly what we will get if we will execute something like this in an environment which in which we have not installed OpenCV, right? If I try to execute uh, import CV2 and I haven't installed the requirements, I haven't installed OpenCV before doing this uh, execution, this is exactly what I will get. So what we will have to do now is to install the dependencies. We will need to install OpenCV in this Lambda function, right? I'm going to show you how we are going to do that. We are going to do it slightly different as we usually do it when we work locally on our own computer, but it will be exactly the same idea. We will be installing Python dependencies, Python packages in a Lambda function or actually in the environment which uh, uses this Lambda function, right? This Lambda function, it's running on a server, it's running somewhere, we, we have no idea where, but it's running on a computer, it's running in a in a server and we are going to install all dependencies in that server and the way we are going to do that is by using a file which i am going to give you right i'm going to give you this file so you can just use it and this uh, the url to this directory to this drive directory will be in the description of this video i'm just going to give you the url so you can just download this file and this is the file we are going to use it's called pythonpackage.zip so i am going to download this file so i show you exactly every single step of this process and i'm going to show you what to do with this file in a few minutes and something else is that although i am just giving you this file i am just giving you this file so you can use it you can also generate it yourself right because in this case we are installing opencv and uh, we're also installing numpy because numpy is another dependency which is needed in order to run opencv and i just i have created the file we need and i'm just going to give it to you but if you have to install other packages for example if you will have to install tensorflow or keras or pandas or whatever other package you will need to install in this lambda function or in any other lambda function you create then you will have to create this file yourself obviously and the way you do that is by following some very 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 simple steps which although i am not going to cover in today's tutorial you could find in other uh, videos uh, in youtube you could find other instructions in other websites and in particular i am going to give you the url to one of my videos a video i have created some time ago where i show you the entire process of how to execute this process i'm going to show you the step-by-step -step guide of how to create the same file we are going to use today the function the, the video i am going to share with you the, fun, the video i am going to share the url with you it's in another channel which is a youtube channel i used to make where i covered different cloud related topics so 
yeah, that was something like an experiment I did for a while and then I just uh, post that project. So I'm not creating videos anymore for that YouTube channel. But uh, nevertheless, I am going to give you an URL to a video so you know how exactly you can create a file like this. So this is the file we have just downloaded. Let me show you how it looks like. And you can see that we have uh, many different libraries. We have many different directories and they are mostly related to OpenCV and NumPy, right? Which are the two libraries we are going to use into this tutorial. Actually, we are only going to use OpenCV, but NumPy is a dependency of OpenCV and that's why we also need NumPy. So the way we will do is going back to the AWS console and now it's time to use another product. We have already used a Lambda function. Now we are going to use an S3 bucket. We are going to learn how to create an S3 bucket. So I am just going to give you like the step-by-step -step guide of how to do it. I'm not going into the details of exactly what is an S3 bucket and all the different options you have in order to create different S3 buckets. So the only thing we will cover in this tutorial is how to create an S3 bucket and how to do everything we need to do in order to make this API up and running. So I have selected S3, now I will create a bucket and uh, we have to select a name for this bucket, absolutely any name will do. And I will just create something which is called uh, Python libraries lambda function, something like this. And I will put the name of this channel at the end, which is computer vision developer. And something you should know about S3 bucket naming <laughs> is that the name of an S3 bucket is completely unique in the entire AWS uh, ecosystem, right? So absolutely every single S3 bucket in AWS, in the entire AWS, so not only in your account, so across all the accounts in AWS, absolutely every single bucket name is unique. So the name you will choose for this bucket name needs to be unique. So I will just leave everything in the default values and I will create this bucket. And the bucket has been created. The only thing I have to do is go into this uh, bucket and I will upload the file we have just uh, downloaded from the, my drive. I will, I see I have this file twice. It's exactly the same one. So I'm just going to upload this one and then I will click upload. And this is going to take a couple of minutes. So we are creating an S3 bucket and we are uploading into this S3 bucket the file we have just downloaded from my drive, right? This is the this is a file we need in order to install OpenCV in the Lambda function we have just created. So that's pretty much what we are doing. And this will take a few more seconds. Okay, so the file has been uploaded. And if I go to this S3 bucket, you can see that uh, yeah, we have this file in the S3 bucket, so everything's okay. And we will need the URL of this file, which we can copy here, right? This is the URL for this file, and I will just click on copy. Then that's it for the S3 bucket. We don't need the S3 bucket anymore. Now we can go back to the Lambda function, and I will go to Layers, and I will create a new layer, create layer. I will call this layer. Uh, OpenCV NumPy um, Image Processing API, let's give this uh, layer a very unique name and I will upload a file from Amazon S3. So this is where I will copy, this is where, where I will paste the URL I have just copied from the uh, S3 bucket, right? So I have just copy and paste this file and compatible runtimes, I will select Python 3.8. This needs to match with the runtime we have selected for the Lambda function. That's very important. So I will select Python 3.8, create, and this will be enough in order to create a layer. And by creating this layer is that we are going to install OpenCV in the environment which uh, runs this Lambda function. So this may take a couple of minutes, but that's pretty much all. Okay, so we have created 
this uh, this layer and the name for this layer is OpenCV Namping Image Processing API and something that's very important is that uh, for every layer we will have different versions so as soon as we create a layer this is uh, created with the number one with the version one as, as the first version and if we want to make some changes to this layer or if we want to change the file which is attached to this layer or whatever change we want to do we will need to create a new version right and in that case we will we will create a new version and this will be the version number two and so on right so for absolutely every single layer we will have versions that's very important too so that's pretty much all for this layer we have just created and now I will go back to the lambda function we were uh, using which is this one color conversion vgr to gray and this is what we will do I am going uh, I'm going to scroll down and to this section which is layer I am going to add a layer, this is custom layers, and I will choose one of my layers. In this case, I am going to choose OpenCV Nampi Image Processing API, which is the layer we have just created. I need to specify the version I am going to use. We only have one, so this will be all, and I will add this layer. And adding a layer, it's, I, I think it's the easiest way to install a Python package into a Lambda function. There are other ways to do it, and e but I'm not going to cover other ways in this tutorial. If you are curious about other ways to install Python packages in a Lambda function, I invite you to uh, search online or search other YouTube channels. There's plenty of information about it. But in this case, this uh, will be enough. So we have installed this layer. Uh, we have added this layer and everything is okay. Now I am going to try to test this Lambda function again. Remember that we have created a test event which somehow simulates the uh, how this Lambda function will be executed, right? This test event uh, inputs an image converted into base64. It's inputting this image converted into base64. So I am going to click test again and let's see what happens. Let's see now everything will work properly. Okay, in base64 is not defined, but this will be easy. The only thing we will have to do is to import base64, which is a built-in Python package. We will not, uh, we don't need to to import this library the same way we did with OpenCV. So I am going to deploy the changes again and let's see what happens now. But you can see that the error has changed. We are not seeing the normal name found of uh, CV2. Now we are seeing another error. So that means everything seems to be okay. Now I am going to uh, test this again and you can see that now everything seems to be working fine because we are not getting any uh, mistake, we are not getting any error and not only that but we are getting the uh, response as we should be getting, right? We are getting something like this which means everything has been executed su successfully and now we are getting something in the output. Now, this is the uh, image, this is the output we are getting from this function and what I'm going to do now is to test how this looks like. I am going to take this phase 64 encoding and I'm going to do exactly the same process as we did here but the other way around. I'm going to another website which the what we will do here is to enter a base64 string and what we will do here is to convert this string into an image. So we, let's see how this image we have just generated looks like. Let's see if this is the grayscale image we are looking for, right? Uh, this will be a very good test in order to see if everything is working properly. And this is how it looks like. It takes a few seconds, but now it's ready. You can see that this is the image we are uh, putting into the function, converting into base64, and this is the image we are getting out, which is exactly the grayscale image of this image. <laughs> so everything seems to be working super, super, super properly. I will say we have completed everything we needed to do in the Lambda function. Everything is ready. We have used the Lambda function, we have used the S3 bucket. The only thing we have to use now, the only thing we have to do now, is going to uh, API Gateway and to set up this API, to, to set this API up and running, and that's going to be absolutely the last step in this process. I am going to, I, I can just, uh, I could close this window, but I'm going to leave it open because we are going to need something from it. And then I'm just going to the S3 bucket I don't need anymore. I'm just going to AP, API Gateway, which is the other product we are going to use. 
and this will be super super straightforward i will you, you can see that we have many different options in order to create an api uh, http uh, api websocket api rest api and rest api private and this is one we are going to use the the first one of the two rest apis so i will select build create your first api i will click ok i will create new api this will be the API name, which I will select something like Image Processing API. <laughs> and th that's pretty much all. Create API. Uh, and that's pretty much all. So we have created the API and now let's create uh, some resources. So let's, uh, let's adjust all the settings and let's do everything we need to do here. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a method, right? I'm going to create a post method. If you are familiar with APIs, you will know that uh, you can create many different methods depending on what you want to do with this API. In this case, the only one we are going to uh, set up is this post method. So I am going to iteration time. This will be lambda function. Then I will select this, this uh, option. Please remember to select this option. Otherwise, it may not work. This is very, very important. And this, uh, this is all. Then we, you need to select the region from your Lambda function. And if I go here, you can see that the region of my Lambda function is uh, US East 1. So this needs to match uh, this region over here. And now I will copy and paste the name of our Lambda function. And I will paste it here. And that's pretty much all. So the yeah this post setup it's it seems to be ready you're about to give api gateway permissions yeah everything's okay and that's pretty much all you are going to see how simple how easy this is you're going to see in a few minutes how easy it is to set up this api so uh, it's pretty much ready about the post method now i will go to settings and i will scroll down and i will add binary media types I will select this option and in order to keep it very simple, the only thing I'm going to do is to do something like this. <laughs> uh, this will this will make it. This will make everything work super, super properly. And that's pretty much all. So now I will back to uh, resources and we let's let's just deploy this API because everything seems to be ready. So I will deploy a API. I need to select a stage. So I will create a new stage because I don't have any, uh, any stage so far. I will call this stage dev as development and I will click deploy. And that's pretty much all in order to set this API up and running. <laughs> that's pretty much all. That's how simple this is. I'm being serious. This is how simple this is. Now let's just test if everything works properly. <laughs> uh, you didn't think this was going to be this easy, right? But that's how easy this is. Now I will go to the resources page because let's test if everything is working properly. And I will click this uh, option, which is test. Let's test if everything works properly. And now this is going to be very similar as we did for the Lambda function. In the request body, I am going to paste this, which is the base64 encoding of the image we are using as an example. So I'm just going to paste it. And that should be it. Now let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see what happens. I'm very, very excited. You can see how simple setting this API is. It's a very, very simple process. And let's see what happens when I press test. It took a few seconds and now we are getting this huge output, right? We are getting something that seems to be okay. And we are getting this huge output. So what I am going to do, let's see if I can just copy and paste. So we can do exactly the same experiment as we did here. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to paste, paste the output we are getting from this um, uh, test, from, from testing this API, and let's see what happens. Let's see if we are getting exactly the same image we should be getting, the grayscale image of the uh, image we are putting as input. And you can see everything seems to be working properly as well. We are getting exactly the grayscale image we should be getting. 
So we are one step closer to reach our goal. Everything will, it's going super, super perfect. And the only thing we have to do now is to call this API, but from our local computer. The idea of creating an API is that this is something we can call from wherever we want, right? So what I'm going to do now is going back to this uh, Python script and I will add a new function which is the function will which will handle the uh, this calling this API and in order to make things easier in this tutorial I have already created this function and this is a function we are going to use so the only thing I'm going to do is to copy and paste this function uh, I have already prepared this function so we don't really waste time coding this function and this is pretty much what we have to do I am going to adjust everything uh, so yeah this is pretty much what we have to do I am going to change the endpoint I'm going to uh, in order to see the endpoint you can go to stages select a stage and this is the endpoint of our API so I will click copy and then I will go here and I will click paste and that's pretty much all so this is the endpoint in which our API is available the only thing we have to do now is to execute this function and we will be calling our API. And in order to show you like super, super quickly how this works, we are encoding this image, then we are in, um, sending this image through this uh, function, through this library, which is called requests, and we are receiving something and this something is our image we, which we need to call in a given way, which need, we need to uh, load in a given way. So you can see that this is pretty much what we are doing. And, in, and now instead of using this function I was using before, convert to gray, I am going to use this other, this other function which is convert to gray API. Everything else will be exactly the same and I will get back here. I am going to delete this uh, image I had previously produced executing the convert to gray and now I will execute exactly the same process but with the convert to gray API. Now what we are doing is doing the color conversion in our API. We are doing the color conversion in the cloud and we are accessing the this uh, color conversion through this function, through this API. So let's see if everything works properly. If it does work properly it means that we have set uh, the API successfully, right? We have an API, an image processing API up and running. Everything seems to be working fine because we didn't have any error. And if I go back to my computer, to my disk, you can see that we have uh, successfully created the grayscale image we wanted. So um, this is it. <laughs> this is how you can set an image processing API. This is how you can create an image processing API. And you notice that although it's, if you're not really used to working in the cloud, if you're not really used to working in AWS, everything looks like a little scary. Everything is a little like confusing because it's like many different products and many different services and many different steps. And we are not really doing a lot of coding in this tutorial. We're not really doing a lot of Python coding. So everything seems like a little confusing, but you may also notice that uh, once you are familiar with the process, everything goes super, super smoothly. You, the only thing you need to do is to create a Lambda function. Then if you are using uh, a Python library, which is not a built-in Python package, you just have to create a layer and to, uh, to input the file with the libraries you need to import in the Lambda function. And then it's just setting up, setting up the API in a very simple way as we have just did here. So, um, yeah, so th that's like a very simple process and this is how we are calling the API. Uh, we are just taking the image here and we are taking the image uh, in the output over here and you can see that the image processing itself is in the API. We are not doing the color conversion here. We are doing the color conversion in the API. And once we learn how to make an API, once we, we learn how to build an API, everything changes <laughs> because you may notice that although this is a very very simple process we can just replace this process for whatever we want if we want to make something like a face detection api we can perfectly do it if we want to make whatever we want with this api we can just do it why because we have learned the uh, basics the foundations of how to create an api uh, from now, yeah, we have learned an amazing tool in order to build amazing projects. And this is very important because remember that if you want to be a computer vision developer, 
yeah, you have to learn Python and OpenCV. That's super, super important. But you also need to know something other than Python and OpenCV, right? If you want to get a job as a computer vision developer or if you want to take some more advanced projects, you definitely need to become skillful in our techniques and uh, setting up an API, make an API up and running, building an API. I think it's something absolutely every single developer should be able to do, right? I think that's something that's very important. I think that's going to enhance your uh, skill sets as a computer vision developer for sure. This is this is very important. And also not only knowing how to build an API, but also getting familiar with the different uh, cloud products will enhance your skills as a computer vision developer tool. For example, in this case, we have used a Lambda function an S3 bucket and the API gateway. I think it's very important to get familiar with these three products and many other products in the AWS as well. So this is going to be all for today. This is exactly how you can build an image processing API using AWS. So if you enjoyed this video, I invite you to click the like button and I also invite you to write me a message in the comments section below telling me what do you think about this video and telling me your ideas or your recommendations about what other videos you would like to see next on this channel. So this is going to be all for today. My name is Felipe, I'm a computer vision developer and in this channel I make tutorials coding tutorials where I show you different resources and different projects which are going to be super super valuable if you are a computer vision developer or if you want to become a computer vision developer. So this is going to be all for today and see you on the next video. <laughs>